Hello everyone, Lattice Lassmoris from the wanderinginvestor.com. So today we're gonna to do something quite fun. So I'm in the middle of Paraguay, a little country of seven million people, in a little town of about 20 to 30,000 people. It's mostly a farming region, and we're gonna go check out a Plan B community, essentially of settlers from Europe that have moved here recently, and they created a whole community that is built around a completely resilient lifestyle. So these people are mostly German, but there are also Americans and Canadians and other Europeans, a few people from South America as well. They live on this community. There's food, there's water, they even have a 3D printer, there's a school. So there's the whole thing uh, with security all around. And these people just want to live in peace on their own, away from government. Uh, so I know it resonates with a lot of people these days. So we're gonna go there. I'm meeting with the, the president who's originally from Austria and he's gonna give us a tour. And then we're also gonna be looking at the lots and how much these lots cost, how much it costs as well to build houses and apartments there. Because it's possible to not just buy to live, it's possible to buy as a plan B and it's also possible to buy as an investment. So we're gonna be doing all of the numbers as well. So it'll be, it'll be an interesting case study. So the little town that we're in is approximately a 30 minute drive away from the community. So there's a nice little central plaza with a nice church, a few supermarkets, a few restaurants, bars. I mean, there's pretty much everything you need, nothing luxurious, but there's everything you need. And this area is generally known to be quite safe here in Paraguay. So we're gonna jump in the car and we're gonna go check it out. Perfect, so I'm here with Dr. Arnau and his wife, Sylvia, who founded this community and this project. How are you? Wonderful, Great. how are you? Good, good, Wonderful. thanks a lot for hosting me and my family here. We're very happy to be spending a few days in, in your community. You're very, very welcome. welcome. <laughs> so what I'm seeing from consulting sessions that I, have, that I have with private clients is increasingly high net worth individuals are looking for a plan B. Mm -hmm. So there are people out there that want to move far away from everything, far away from society. They're worried about everything that's going on. But there are others who just want to, to have one foot in, one foot out. They want to be ready if, if things really you know, hit the fan. And you essentially created this, this community which encompasses both, which is quite interesting. So people that are full-time settlers here, and then also people that spend a bit of time here and then go back to Europe or the US mm -hmm. and do go back and forth. So can you tell us a bit more about why you came up with such a project, what the essence of your project is and your objectives and essentially how many people are here, how many people you want to live here? So um, after six years of doing this project, there is a lot of information, so let's start somewhere. El Paraíso Verde is in the center of Paraguay uh, in a uh, subtropical climate. We have more than 300 days of sunshine, and uh, we have, a, as you can see, everything is blossoming, bl uh, blooming. It's, it's kind of a very, very nice climate, and um, we were looking for a place where you could be far away from the poisons that you have everywhere in the so-called civilized world. And you, you probably research yourself what I mean with poisons of all kinds. Um, and if you want to be far away and you have a place where you can have clean air, clean water, clean food, and uh, above all, where you're being left in peace. You're, you're being left so that you can do your thing. And that's... It's only a few places in the world where you can do that. Paraguay is a very, very freedom-loving country. You have a, a constitution similar to the U.S. Uh, people can have weapons here, so they are very, very free in how they live. The Paraguayans are very freedom-loving, so if anybody tries to take away their freedoms, they get really upset. 
that's a good good thing because we're not alone here and uh, we were looking for a place where you can settle but still uh, and i know that your clients that are looking for a plan b once they are using the plan b they want to have all the amenities of a plan a right yeah let's face it a plan b is not some kind of uh, a little hut in the mountains or in the jungle once you, ha you you go to your plan b you need to uh, have a shop you need to have health uh, 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 health care you need to have all the amenities that you're used to and so that's what we created we created uh, for those people who are looking for a plan b a perfect plan b you have 16 square kilometers that's eight times the size of a monaco that's a country where you have no radiation where you have no uh, poisons from the sky from the water from the air from from the from nothing so where you are poison free we, you'll be eating organic food we have the cleanest water in the world and uh, basically we are living here at a type of freedom that is unheard of unseen of and that's why we've been all over the world in in, in the radio television and the newspapers all even wall street journal i don't know where else i mean you name it we've been in all of them uh, uh, not with all the stories being uh, like reflecting who we are and that for, therefore we're thankful that you come because you wanted to find out. You came here two days ago and with a lot of doubts, I guess. You know, <laughs> a lot of doubts. I was intrigued. And uh, but uh, anyway, after two days, you know who we are. Hola, buenas tardes, buenas tardes. Oh, very nice. Gosh. So how much cattle do you have here? Mm. Well, uh, normally we, we have around 2,000 cattle. And we will uh, uh, increase this this year to about 5,000 cattle. So the cattle uh, business is uh, the backbone, one, one of the backbones of the uh, economic part of El Pariso Verde. Because we always need to know that we have... Oh, hey, yes. Mm -hmm. We, we need to know that we have enough uh, income, uh, current income, that if uh, uh, we not have an influx of new investors, we still have enough income to sustain the operation here. And sustainability is the watchword of the whole project. I buy a lot, yeah. I build a house. Yeah. We're gonna go see some of those later. There's all of these animals, the sheep, the 2,000 cattle, etc. So this belongs to, to you as a to separate the, corporation? To the parent co 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 corporation, Rejov Esaika. We okay. are a, a corporation that actually has a license for the stock exchange, but we will never go on the stock exchange. We only allow people that actually have a lot here to live yes. and at least plan to live here. Part B, or plan B or plan A, we don't care. They can invest into shares. And if you are a preferred shareholder of this corporation, then you are a part owner of this. Okay. But it's separate from the lots. So let's say I buy a lot, I build a house. How do I actually benefit from all of this, apart from okay. the visual aspect and the kids being able to, I don't know, just run around and you right, know, play horses. with the animals? Like right. well, concretely, how, do, how, do I, how does yeah. this help my own resilience because okay. it's not mine it's yours so we produce organic food mm -hmm. everything we do here is organic we are in the process of organic certification international organic certification and we go one step further for those who know about this at demeter demeter uh, certification is even more stringent than organic and we'll get both and so which means we produce organic beef organic sheep organic chicken uh, no, we're not doing anything to our horses. We love them. Horse meat. The Swiss, uh, they well, eat horse no, meat. No, it's not. This is not, not all. Here. Not here. Not, <laughs> the not Swiss here. are not, not allowed here. to eat horse but, meat. But, uh, yeah. and uh, all of the vegetables and fruits that we grow here is organic. Okay. So, if you have a lot here and you live here, you profit because this is a sustainable community. In times of crisis, we don't need anybody. Right now, of course, we are purchasing some fruits and vegetables because we want to have more variety. But uh, if there would be a crisis, we are completely self-sufficient and uh, that's how you benefit. So is there a place where I can buy some of the meat and the fruit and the vegetables and the chickens here on... on we, have, we have the Minima Crado. Check, 
Okay. Check our mini Mercado. Okay, so essentially as a resident, then I would have preferred access. So if there are food shortages, if there are supply chain issues, before these things get sold to other Correct. people, the community Correct. would get fed, Correct. would have access Correct. to it first. We Correct. only sell the okay. surplus to the outside community, okay. which we do already. Cool, okay, no, this is, this is very interesting. And then you, you, you have a whole vegetable garden and all of that. Actually, let's talk about horses, because this is really cool. So if you're an owner here, you can just park one of the horses and you'll have your employees take care of the horse, Correct. et cetera. How much does it cost? I'd like, well, let's say I, I buy, uh, let's call her Lucy. Let's say I buy Lucy. Lucy. Um, I, well, actually uh, that's I'll not Lucy, a that's more of a Harry. A guy. <laughs> let's say I buy Harry. So I, say, buy Harry. I say, hey, Dr. Anel, I want you to take care of Harry because yeah. I don't know, my daughter, right. it's her horse. Right. Um, how does it work concretely? Uh, so we take care of the horse, we feed it, there is a, in comparison to other stables, a very moderate fee for doing that. Roughly? Roughly, what is it, 130 US dollars, 140 US right dollars a now, month, but the, the including horses food, are just right outside. now. They I mean, we have, have 2023. Have okay. It's just being outside. Like H- horses here don't like stables. Yeah. Okay. If you build stables for horses, you may build them for nothing because they don't, don't want to stay in there. Cool, so essentially you can have your house right. and you just take your bicycle and you come to your horse, you what's up the guy put beforehand? The hey, we have put the saddle. For saddle. You put your saddle on. Okay, you put it, or one of the guys yeah. puts it for you beforehand. Of course, yes, you can do that. You phone the guy. We have six veterinarians. Oh, six, right. six veterinarians. Six yeah. vets on site. Six vets on site. Okay. So uh, and so somebody can also saddle your your horse. You come here, and we have more than a hundred kilometers of streets where you can ride and this, you, you can be all day, you can be on your horse. That's pretty cool. All right, goodbye, Harry. Cool, let's go check out the, the garden. <laughs> okay. That's a lot of green stuff. Yeah. yeah, we have many places where we produce green stuff. That is our, our commercial agricultural production. It's called chakra in Spanish. And uh, here we grow everything that's called vegetable that can grow here, which is pretty much everything in a subtropical area. Uh, and you have the like remolacha is Spanish, rote beete is German. Is this for the children? Beete vulgaris. Is this for the children from the school so that they learn uh, all the different? Well, it's also yeah, the adults too. Yeah, <laughs> for you, I, I feel like I them. need this education. <laughs> And with the Latin name so that they, uh, yeah, we have the children that, uh, our children learn how to grow things. Oh, really? How to grow vegetables, because I think it's more, more mi- minimum as important to learn how to uh, build a house, how to, how to uh, make a, a chair or a table, how to grow a, uh, a beet, uh, like beets, how to, how to uh, plant a tree. That's minimum as important as your mouth and whatever. Nice. You know? So, and so it's part of the school curriculum to, to do yeah, this. So yeah. the kids work in we, here. You no, know, we actually have a, 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 a special garden for the kids. Oh, really? So nice. we have many places. This is the biggest agricultural place called Chakra. It goes way down here. And then we have the smaller place, which is called the Huerta, the yeah. garden where we have more fruit trees. Uh-huh. And we have a fruit yard for citrus fruits. We have the, 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 the settlers uh, or the, the children's garden. And then we have areas where our settlers are growing fruit trees, the child just planted fruit trees. So there's many places. So which means we always want to have a surplus of food. Of course, everything is organic here. Right? Everything's organic. Every, uh, so I, I can mean, just like grab something, eat it. You can eat good. it. That uh, was one of the basic tenets that everything we do here is without poisons, without chemicals. Okay, nice. And all of these are available for sale in the mini mercado. Correct, correct. So every day fresh production goes in. Uh, you can even order, sell it, and you get it fresh. And same. how are the prices of, for example, your salads versus me going to the local market in town? What do you think? Well, What's the premium it's, versus it's local pretty produce? Pretty much the same. It's pretty much, pretty the, much same the same price. Same price. Same yeah. price. Okay, yeah. so some with some some things you cannot get in Casaba because they don't produce. Yeah. This is melanzani or aubergine. Yeah. Uh, this is a higher price because you can find this in 
in Asuncion. Okay, so you sell that to the restaurants, to these things we, in Asuncion? No, right it. now we use it all. Right now okay. we use We've, it all. You like aubergine that much? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, we get it very often. Uh, cool. With 200 yeah. people, uh, you use quite a lot of veggies. Every yeah, yeah, day. that's true. <laughs> and and f- yeah. tell us about water, because I see there's irrigation, everything. How, how sustainable is your water source? Well, Paraguay is, uh, if you translate it from Guarani, from the language, is the land above the water. So the water that flows to the water. So Paraguay, and that's one of the main reasons why we're here, is founded on an, uh, un- an underground river it's the second largest underground river uh, or um, aquifer. aquifer. The biggest one is uh, beneath the Sahara. This is the second biggest one. It's so big that it comprises parts of Bolivia, Brazil, Paraguay. It's so big that even if no water would get into it right now, which uh, there's constantly water filtering through, yeah. uh, it would uh, be enough water for 8 billion people for 400 years. Cool, so no water security issues, essentially. No water security, (laughs) and the water is clean because it runs through 100 to 400 meters of clay and other stone. So the filter capacity, no matter what they do on the surface, uh, the filter capacity of 100 to 400 meters of stone, clay, whatever, is uh, is so good that the water is absolutely clean. There are, there are companies in Paraguay that take that water out of the deep well, they are called deep wells, and they fill it into bottle and sell it. They do nothing with it. And we do the same. We have 15 licensed uh, uh, deep wells. Yeah. You need to get an approval, but we get it because when I mean, this is a big community and we can always get more if we wanted to so if nice. the community grows we always get more we have actually now basic license unlimited wells nice we've right now just made 15 that's enough for now and i've been drinking the water from the tap in the hotel yeah. room here on site yeah. that you have and yeah the water is really good it tastes great and also after taking a shower your whole skin is just soft. There's no chlorine, there's there's nothing. It, it just no feels chlorine, great. No chlorine, no. Nothing in it. Nothing. Cool, fantastic. So, so yeah, if there are yeah, 2,000 heads of cattle, um, you know, all the sheep, all the chickens, all the, all the food. So I see the food security, I see the water security. And I think what's really interesting, um, and this is where I can see that there's a bunch of Germans with engineering backgrounds here, is you have a massive 3D printer. Right. So I think let's, let's go check, check out this out because this facility. is very random. We're in the middle of Paraguay and there's a massive 3D printer in a warehouse. You see something you cannot see anywhere in South America. <laughs> we'll <laughs> yeah. show you. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Great. So can you tell us about these? Yeah. This is the only place in South America where you can find houses like these. These are printed with a 3D printer. So we are not making little stuff with the 3D printer, we'll make the big stuff. Uh, it's an industrial robot, an ABB robot, the one that you also use for building cars. And, but this one spits out, you know, it spits out like little sausages of, of concrete and it makes these little, it goes around and round it up. And then you have a solid concrete wall. This is more durable than regular concrete. It also reflects sunlight. It's very uh, insulating and we fill it up, it's hollow, and we fill it up with perlite. Mm-hmm. Perlite is also an insulating substance, a non-organic insulating substance. So these houses, we are prefabricating. As you can see uh, back in the lot, about 20 houses are prefabricated. Why wow. are we doing this? Very often an investor wants to, uh, as soon as possible, make a return on his investment. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, with this uh, method, we can actually uh, from the signing of the contract to renting it out three to four months. Wow, and so th- money paid? Money paid. Four months later, tenant Four months later is in. So three months the whole thing is there, but, and then it's just a matter of furniture, what you want to select, or do you have household goods in there? And you, all, you can also take care of this, the furniture package and all that. We can take care of it. We, that, we do so this all the time. Everything. We finish everything. Normally the tenant organizes his own tableware and stuff. Yeah, but okay. basically we put all the furniture in, standard furniture. We'll ask if uh, the kids, bunk beds, etc. So we have to respect the furniture for the tenant. And the people that are not familiar with 3D printing, they might ask you how, how durable is this? How appropriate is it for like the relatively harsh weather here in Paraguay? This is a sun reflecting. So it actually has, it's probably more durable than regular concrete. 
It's, it's, really, it's, it's a really good solution. They use it, by the way, <laughs> they use it in Abu Dhabi and in the Sahara. Oh, okay. They, the, most of their clients are from there, and we are the only ones in South America that bought this thing. And my cost, this whole investment is a, m close to a million investment. Okay. So we did this because we know that a big wave of investors will come. We are, we are not at the big wave yet. When, when the big wave comes, people want to live here. And if they want to live here, I need to provide a, a, an accommodation within three or four months. So this machine, if it's working full time, yeah. how many standard two bedroom houses can it build in a month roughly? Uh, right, now, right now we are building about one a week, but we can implement a system where we can do double to triple. Which, is, which means a, a rail system where, where we print and put, sh shove it out a rail, you know, on a rail, we shove it out a rail, it's all planned. We don't need it right now. We, one a week is well enough, but cool. we could make three a week if we do that. Yeah, because the, the, guys, the guys are only working in the morning right now. Oh yeah, right, and, and the guys are only working in the morning, we can do three shifts, cool. you know? Okay, and, so. it's, and it's not like these machines need to go to bed, right? No, they, they, this is an, an industrial robot, an yeah. ABB robot that lasts forever. They're, they're built like for the car industry, yeah. the ones that, and they run off th uh, sometimes three shifts. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. This whole community is built around the idea of resilience. I've spent the last few months traveling around Latin America. I went to a few such communities in Costa Rica, in Panama, etc., in Mexico as well. And I have not found a single community that is as advanced as yours, and yet you've managed to pull this much off in six years. I'll attribute this to your Austrian rigor. <laughs> um, you know, this place is far, so it is a, a disadvantage from an accessibility point of view. You have to come to Paraguay. It's not necessarily very well connected. And then once you land at Asuncion, you need to drive another four hours um, to this place. The lack of accessibility is one of the reasons that there is this level of freedom. So, you know, you can't have this level of freedom near New York, for example, or Toronto. So let's talk about the people who are living here, because you talk about community. So can you, can you tell us how many people live here full time? Um, you know, are, are, are a lot of people coming here? Where are the people typically from? Can you just give us a bit of an overview? Uh, to the accessibility, uh, I, I normally don't tell this because I don't always talk to people on, on that kind of level of investment. But uh, yes, you go to Asuncion, it's an international airport. And if you wanted to be here in 25 minutes, you can take an airplane, a small airplane or a helicopter and we have a full-sized jet airport in Casapa. Oh, really? Casapa has a 1,600 meter landing strip. Okay. So you could actually land with a small uh, uh, Airbus. Uh -huh. a sm even a small Airbus may be able to land. So any Learjet, anybody else. So we have deliberately created, because we know with where the world is going right now, and you can research that, we don't need to get into this. But where the world is going right now, a lot of people that actually have more assets will also look for safe places. And there are people that have their own airplanes. There are people that or have access to, to airplanes. So if you go to, to Asuncion, we are, depending on the speed of your airplane, between 15 and 30 minutes away, and you land in Casaba Airport. Okay, and a, then half a an fully, hour. fully, completely new, brand new air, airport, jet airport. And uh, since we are right now getting the, the asphalt street down here. So the probably, road I, I drove on will be, it will be a proper asphalt, pavement. Yeah, okay, probably good. this year, probably in 2023, that's what it looks like. That's a good catalyst. They are very close to completion here. Uh, and w when that is done, you from that airport, it takes you 10 minutes to get here. So you practically, and I needed to tell you this in terms of accessibility. Okay. It is very easy to access if you have the uh, like air ta taxi. So that's all available. Great. So this is a more of a lifestyle property. Of course, yeah. It was never intended to rent or for investment. Uh, it is a pilot, uh, uh -huh. a guy who was is a Europe uh, a pilot, and he came over here and said, "I want to live with my family, very young children." So he said, "Um." 
use whatever assets I have. So it's like middle class. This is not a rich person. Okay. But with the housing prices here, he could afford making a huge villa nice. with a pool and at the lake. Let's go. Let's and go we'll check it out. Check it out. So, Doctor, now so this lot and house, so that we have an idea altogether how much approximately in U.S. dollars. So, uh, with the finishing, you're looking. You're looking at a 2,500 square meter a lot. Okay. With a lake, a quarter of this lake belongs to him. It's yeah. his, his own lake. Uh huh. And you're you're looking at this whole house with three large bedrooms. Utility rooms, everything. Oh, big utility room here. Big utility room. Okay. Uh, uh, you're looking at about 220,000 for the okay. whole thing. 220,000 euros? Euros, so okay. 230 whatever in dollars. Yeah. So they are big kids rooms and uh, like for the kids, ideal. No? We just came in here without announcements, so uh, this is how people live. No? Mm -hmm. Three bedroom. Oh, three bedroom. I really like the bathroom. It's gorgeous. Cool. Big shower. It's one of the nicest bathrooms that we have here. It's really nice. There's a big shower right here behind. Big shower. Living and room. The yeah, living the rooms nice. in Paraguay are not very big because most of the time you're out at the terrace. What do you have? You have a big terrace, but the living room is just for the few days that you want to stay inside. A big kitchen. And when I say 220,000, that's including everything you see. That's okay. what they invested. Euro, so 230, 240K right. USD right. roughly, right. including the nice pool. Uh, yeah, the pool is just that's a an nice asset. Pool. Hey, Yasmin. Hey. Ooh, and nice Yasmin thought. takes care of our horses. So we want to oh, yeah. have a horse nice. ranch and we want to have a place where people that like to ride 100, 100 kilometers of, of roads wow. to ride. So it's a, a paradise for cool. horse lovers too. So, so many more Harrys and Lucys. Right. So look at the lot here. Mm -hmm. This is a round lake with about 900 square meters. Okay. Um, and uh, a quarter of the lake is owned by each of these four owners. Okay. And uh, like the owner next to it. And it's swimmable it, in there? What's that? It's swimmable? It's swimmable, yeah. It, okay. it has about four and a half meters depth. Okay. So uh, it's always cold. Like when you dive down there, it's always cold, the water. Yeah. And it's good that we see one where you see uh, more or less finished development. And also that's in, under construction. In two months, yeah. people will be living there and doing their gardens. So, I mean, we just saw the, the 3D printer. I see that they're not using no, the 3D not yet, printing. No, not yet. We are really getting going with the 3D printer now. Okay. Uh, we can see the one house that's already standing, okay. but uh, I have now projects where like, like you have a little lot with four of these houses on and that's good profit. It's very good profit and it's very fast. But here it's also interesting. This was a half a hectare. Uh, the, the owners bought half a hectare and they put two apartments on one side yeah. and put their villa on the other side. Okay, I think this is interesting. So half a hectare, approximately one acre. Yeah. And so they have their own property and then they're, they plan on renting out the other one. Uh, the other way around. This is their own one. So okay. what they did, they came here, they did what most investors do. First, they bought the half a hectare. Yeah. Then they first built the two apartments. Okay. And now they moved into their apartments. Okay. Now, which is also good because if you ever change your mind, selling this property with two apartments on it yeah. and no house. Yeah. You could always change your mind, you know, yeah. suddenly you want to go into the mountains, I don't know, you know? But, then, but then, then you can still say, well, I'm selling a half a hectare with two apartments on it. I have sold these sometimes in less than a day. Okay. Because the new guy says, well, you know, I can already move in, you know? Cool. And I can plan my house like I want. Cool. And this gives the opportunity if family decides to come, then they are here. We now have about 250 people living here. Yes. Uh, we have about 15, 20 uh, kids in kindergarten and about the same amount of kids in at school. We have a school here, which will be a publicly recognized school by the end of the year. Right now it's not. We have waited a little bit because we wanted to see how this whole thing works out with 
with weird United States uh, views of the world and of kids and of whatever, social life, you know, boys and girls, you know, and we were a little cautious, but now we know that everything is uh, normal here in Paraguay, so these kind of ideas that some in America may have d did not transpire to Paraguay, you know, we could hold them off. Cool. So more traditional education. So it's more, well, we have boys and girls here. I don't know. And no matter how often I look at people, I see men and women. I don't know. Maybe I'm, I'm not intelligent enough, but I see men and I see women. I maybe I'm old fashioned, but so Paraguay actually has men and women and boys and girls, and that's the way it will stay. Uh, we make sure of that. And now, now the road is clear that we'll get our school recognized officially. Okay. Cool. So our school will be recognized and probably by the end of 2024, once we are recognized as a colony, which is a, 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 a it's actually a body, a colony is like a, a country within the country. That's so only possible in Paraguay. I, I think this is also important to go into the history of it because right. historically in Paraguay, there were always persecuted minorities that would come over. And I think the colony system started with the Mennonites, correct? Uh, the Mennonites have m many colonies and the Mennonite colonies have uh, worked best because their basis is the Bible cool. and the creed. So Mennonites are essentially relatively similar to Amish. Uh, there are these German Amish-like communities in the north of the country and they have a special status which you're trying to attain the, as well right. for this community. There have been uh, 55 recognized colonies in the history of Paraguay in the last 250 years, but colonies date even earlier, but the, the colony museum uh, starts about 250 years ago. There have been colonies of Austrians, Germans, Japanese, uh, you name it, Canadians, uh, United States, Swiss. There have been so many colonies. And the lasting colonies were the ones founded on a belief or creed. So 250 people, what's yeah. the makeup of, of the people? Because it's heavily German at this stage. Uh, right now, since we started with our marketing material in German and these interviews, which are now historic, that we did five and six years ago uh, with Robert Stein, they were all in German. So therefore, we have about 80% German, Austrian, Swiss, and 20% other countries. We now have 15 nationalities. And uh, right now, I think the influx from other countries will be bigger. So if we talk in two or three years, there may be as many United yeah. States and American citizens. We hope for that because we want to have an international community. That's basically. So the age is from newborn to over 80. Uh, it's very mixed. Mm -hmm. We have young couples and we have also elderly people that are retired here because you can live in Paraguay for, I don't know, two or three hundred dollars a month. If you if you have your own house and your own little vegetable garden, you could potentially live of 250, 300 US dollars. Okay. Not if you go to the Bamba Bo Cafe every day, but but if you if you live off your garden and you have a few chicken, you could almost live for free. So, and that's good. It's also for retired people, very good. You have a very low standard uh, living cost, very low living cost. And uh, you also have no taxes here. If you live off a pension fund, no taxes. Uh, we have a lot of people here that work off the internet, many. We're the only place in Paraguay that has two physical uh, 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 fiberglass cables. Cool, fiber optics. So you, fiber optics, you have more uh, internet reliability in El Pariso Verde than you have in Asuncion. Yeah, the internet's fast. So, you, so you, have, you have people that work over the internet that have chosen to live here because your income, your international income is not taxed in Paraguay. Not applicable to U.S. people. Not applicable to U.S. people because they need to pay taxes if they are yeah. U.S. citizens. I know, yeah. tax returns. No? Every March, is it March? Right, March, uh, <laughs> right. So anyway, but... But uh, uh, here you, are, you are have a very low cost of living, you have very low taxes, uh, you have an internet that is unheard of in Paraguay, and, uh, and you have clean air and everything else. So, and I think from a resilience point of view, so if we take the, the case of you know, extreme things happening in the world, right. um, big supply chain disruptions, et cetera, the reality is you know, 
a potentially a banking crisis, you have right. a hard time having access to your money, or your pension goes to zero. I mean, these things have happened in history. I'm not mm -hmm. saying it's going to happen, but these things have happened in, the hist in history. So if we take this stress test, the advantage of having your own house and then also one or two investment properties on, the, on your own property is that in case of issues, you know you can always get some sort of income. With local income. Local, local income, getting paid by people one way or another um, locally. Right. So this makes you and your family a lot more resilient. And I like the fact that in this community, because often an issue with, especially in North America, uh, in all of these gated communities is that there are just so many rules in terms of what you can build, what you can't build, blah, blah. Here it's actually very flexible. Right. You know, as, as long as you're reasonable, you can pretty much do whatever you want on your property. I mean, you, people laugh, I can say you can build a medieval fortress here. Yeah. I mean, it's your property, you can do whatever yeah. you want. This would not be good for this if, property's if, value if they had if this. If this would, yeah. would be your life stream, you know, you would make it look nice, but we have no, we have on the properties, we have no restriction to the style of what you're building. And we have very little restrictions, just the borderlines and we need to keep somehow so that the sure. neighbor is not infringed upon. Uh, this is, see, he's going to make about between 1,200 and 1,400 uh, 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 dollars rent. For these two for tiny these apartments. Two, for these yeah. apartments. So, and that's enough for him to live with his family of four. Cool. And this, this is what, you know, being resilient, being truly resilient means, having local income. And also, anyone can start pretty much any business from their and own that, house. That's a beauty. She, she say, if he gets the idea, I want to uh, do pizza, then yeah. he starts in his kitchen. Like Yasmin could start in her kitchen and just start making pastries. Cool. And then she starts selling them. If it works, she can always go and do it somewhere else. If it doesn't work or it's not a big business, you can do it from her kitchen. Yeah. That's one of the big advantages. You can do any commercial activity, as long as it doesn't stink, as long <laughs> as it's not noisy, uh, and as long as it doesn't smoke, uh, you can do anything out of your own private property or apartment. Yeah, so a bit later I'll be showing some, some footage. I'm going with uh, some of the settlers here, some of the people living right. here. We're going to the, to the gun range and I already met some of them. They're from Norway and they have an ice cream business ice cream. at home. So yeah. they get the milk from the local cows. Correct. All right. organic. They're making ice cream in their own home and then selling it to selling it no. to the community. This can only happen in El Paraiso Verde. Out yeah. there, you would need permits, 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 and other permits, and you would never get going here. And then to add on top what we were saying with the uh, with the crisis situation, you could have a a, a, a media sombre, half a shadow, yeah. you know, where you can grow vegetables. Uh -huh. uh, in Paraguay, you need about 100 square meters per person to live off the vegetables. So have a few chicken yeah. and have and have a, a vegetable garden here. There's enough space there. Can so you, you can, can feed you have yourself. A, can you have a fish farm in there? Yeah, if, if the four owners agree to have yeah. fish, they could uh, put tilapia on it. We have one lake yeah. where the owner is, is a big property where the owner owns the lake. He put tilapia in it. So okay. he feeds the tilapia organic. Yeah? Yeah. And it's not too many tilapia, so he doesn't need to put any chemicals or, or uh, antibiotics in it. But he has tilapia. Cool. He has fish every Friday. Cool. Fantastic. So about $230,000, 240000 yeah. 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 for all of this. Yeah. If I were to buy this, hand it over to you, I know this is not really supposed to be an investment property. How much do you think you could get in terms of rental income on a monthly basis for if it? If I compare other rental income on other places that I actually rented out, let's say 2000 Okay. It's doable. So about 10% gross yield. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, also, because it's a bit more expensive, I'd say it's probably a bit harder to have tenants. Typically, it would be people with more money, so they're probably building something else. Correct. So now we're going to go check out actual investment properties right. where we would have tenants that would stay longer, longer term. We're going to now look at a house that can be rented out and also owned, which is like this in-between kind of yeah. thing, like half the budget. Perfect. And then we can also look at the apartments. Cool. So a bit over $100,000 for the other one. Cool, so we were on our way to the investment property, but we just bumped into Matthias and Heike. So for the, the little apartments, for the people that are building their villa and with the two investment properties here, we bumped into them and they're kind enough to, to show us. So I think that'll be interesting. How are you? 
Fine, fine. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> and you. Good, good. So <laughs> Matthias and Heike originally from Germany. From Germany. And so you built these two investment properties for yourselves for what retirement exactly. income or exactly uh, okay. yeah yeah when did you finish building these properties? Uh, we moved into this one uh, four weeks ago. Four weeks ago, great. Uh, we we uh, intended to use this uh, until our. Uh, um, Casa, <laughs> our uh, home is is uh, ready, and um, then we move uh, over there. And so, yeah, four weeks ago we uh, finished everything, and this one. End of this week, uh, it's it's uh, ready to. Uh, Perfect. Okay, so it's not even fully ready yet, but you already have tenants. Exactly. Right? Okay, and how much are they paying per month? Uh, four million guaranis. Four uh, without uh, without water and electricity. Okay, so four million. So that's approximately six hundred dollars, roughly. Yes. And they have to pay for all of the the water, the electricity, yes. the the internet, and yes. all of that. Yes. Okay. Cool. Great. So let's go inside. So very simple. Bathroom, bedroom, living room, and kitchen. So very simple, but ceilings again high so this is it i mean you get two of these um and you're making twelve hundred dollars a month you can manage it yourself you live across and i mean that's all you really need for retirement here life is really cheap in paraguay and then that's it you you have your resilient plan b and we wanted to create a new community pe where people can trust each other when you meet somebody on the street or in the property, you know this person means good for me and I mean them good. So there is always this distrust you can have with the people living here. And that's, that was one of the biggest bases to go out and to found a new community because this is something you hardly find outside. Yeah, so basically, Basically, uh, El Paris Verde is a community. Above all, it's not a real estate investment, not a loan. It, it, it can be a real estate investment, but we're not looking for people who just look for the money. We look for people that are real, honest, true people. And you know what? After six years, we have a community that lives by our tenets, which are on the internet everywhere. Our tenets you can read. And tenet number one is, I believe that you want the best for me, and you can believe that I want the best for you. And that's about it. We are non-religious, we're not, we have no religious denomination, we, we're not, we have no political affiliation, we have no, we, we want to be completely independent, but basically that is we are respect one another and we also respect that we are different. It's very important. We have people from all kinds of creeds, we have people that are convinced that the earth is round, others may, may think of maybe it's not round, whatever, you know. It's the only place on earth where you can go to our coffee shop, drink a beer with somebody, talk about a topic, and uh, at the end you can say, you know, you think the earth is round, I think the earth is flat, whatever, whatever you want to think. Or maybe it's not neither round nor flat, I don't know. But basically you can have completely different opinion about something and still know that the other person's me wants the best for me and I want the best for the other person. We drink a beer, we, we, at the end we agree that we disagree and this is the only, the only community where we will, at the end, will have free teaching and free science. Mm -hmm. Science can only exist in a climate of dissent. Mm -hmm. We must have different opinions. Once we all have the same opinion, there's no science, end of science, then it's a, it's a cult. That's what modern science is. So this is why we will create a university here because we want people, if somebody says, well, you're pulled to earth, and other, other one says, you're pushed to earth. Well, let's see, we disagree, let's see what is the truth. Mm -hmm. We can only find the truth if we fundamentally are able to disagree without being at odds with one another. Cool. That's basically our philosophical background. And that's basically, we, we believe that man is a spiritual being Let's put it this way, if an atheist wants to come, they don't last long here. So, so all the people that live here are fundamentally convinced 
that they're more than just a piece of meat. So cool. Let's put it this way. That's a bottom line, you know? And everything above that, uh, everybody can have his own belief. And that's, that's it's important just to know where's our borderlines, you know? This is not for money. We've never done this for money. Uh, if we would have done this for money, we would have never done it this way. We always did it in order to create a sort of a Noah's Ark. A Noah's Ark where freedom is still preserved for you. Freedom to do your thing. Our job was always to create an environment where people can do their thing. We called it Paraiso Verde, the green paradise, as a sum total of you create your paradise, your neighbor creates his paradise, his neighbor creates his paradise, and all of these 2,200 properties, by the way, are 2,200 paradises, all together is one big paradise. And Sylvia, and my job was to make sure that you're secure here, that you're free here, that you are not poisoned here, by no means poisoned, and you research what for you is poison, right? So you're not poisoned, and you can grow and I, we do believe it's not only growing materialistically, but also growing spiritually. And this is the only way that you can even grow spiritually if you are not poisoned and if you are free and if there is not uh, tomorrow the, the, an agency of the government coming after you and then the police and then the FBI and then the whatever agency wants something from you and you need to get another permit. You can do everything you want here if you want to make pizza, you don't need a permit, you just make pizza. And if people like it, you sell pizza and you make money with pizza. And if you don't like it tomorrow, you do something else. This is the kind of freedom that we have created here. And this is by people from all walks of life and from all countries. 15 different countries are coming to us. Cool, so we saw the, the more the lifestyle property and now we're gonna go check out a house that would be both for people that are more on a budget mm -hmm. or so potentially good. an investment property as well, right? Correct, correct. And you asked me to do this because I normally don't show this house until it is really fixed up, yeah. finished. But uh, we got the power of attorney yesterday. Okay. So therefore, uh, you wanted me to show it. So I'll mm -hmm. do show it. This is a typical case. Uh, we have uh, more than 100 houses built. Mm -hmm. And right now we have, I think, two houses for sale. So it's a two to 3% of the houses are always going on the market or being resold. That's normal, that's life. Uh, reason why people leave, very easy, same thing. Grandmother built the house, had this additional lot for the children. Children say, we don't want to go to Paraguay, we stay in Germany. Lady leaves, it's just normal, normal case. Yeah, huh? attrition. So, at, normal attrition. So this house has about, uh, what was 900 square feet, big as uh, so a living space, 900 square feet. The whole lot is about 8,100 square feet. But there is an additional lot, which has a very special position, which is the last lot before the dam street. And you have unobstructed view. So this so, will all be pasture after the this road? This will always stay pasture. There is never going to be buildings here. Okay. And this is a, a jungle here. And uh, in this jungle is a natural river, the, the uh, River Pirapo. Pirapo. So whoever wants to live here, like not, not just for renting, it would make sense to buy both properties. And I mean, this is gorgeous. This it's is uh, beautiful. It's yeah. so quiet here. It's so just the lot of 800 square meters. Yeah. So about eight and a half, uh, nine thousand square feet. Is You're right around twenty-five thousand dollars. Cool. So twenty-five k, and that's pretty much entry level here it's for the community. It's pretty much entry level. Like you yeah. won't you won't find any cheaper than twenty-five k. This is the essentially amongst the cheapest lots in this community. Correct. Um, as soon as you start to have a river access or a lake access, <coughs> or you're closer to the center, uh, and then the prices go up. So this Correct. is really entry level, which is what I, I wanted to to show mm -hmm. More to show less, yeah. you know both sides. You can have right. the the full on you know nice lifestyle, or you can go come here a bit more on a budget. And this is so a house like this. Let's go inside. I mean, it's not right. finished, uh, but yeah, like two bedrooms. Uh, I like the the height. Yeah, of yeah. the ceiling room. Yeah. No. Okay. So. Okay. So two bedrooms. You have two nice bedrooms, and you have a closet, a walk-in oh. closet. Oh, All this right. is a bathroom. I'm sorry. Bathroom. So you have. 
You have a bathroom here. You have two bedrooms and a bathroom here. Cool. So you know you have two bathrooms here and next. And you have another bathroom. Yeah. Cool. So roughly with normal finishings, how much would uh, just building a house like this cost per square meter? If you if you go per square meter, you right around between. 80,000 and 100,000 US dollars for this house. Okay. Uh, depending on how expensive your tiles are, your sanitary objects and whatever, and, and how expensive your, your kitchen is. Okay. Okay. Great. So you add the price of the lot of about 25K, you're around 105, $110,000 for a house like this. Um, this is pretty much entry level in the community. Right. If you want even cheaper, you can build, you can buy a lot like this and build a little one bedroom house. Um, right. Some people have right. done this, um, but this would be kind of your, your typical entry level house where you don't right. feel squeezed because the other ones Correct. we saw a bit like yeah, a, a little bit smaller. smaller. Also, this is the high quality windows and it's, it, this is a, a, a little bigger, uh, better standard of a house. So. Let's talk plan B. So let's say I live in Canada, I want a plan B. Mm -hmm. I also don't want to put hundreds of thousands of dollars in a plan B because I may not be able to afford it or I don't have the inclination to invest mm -hmm. that much into my plan B. Uh, but I want to have something that I can then also rent out. Correct. Right? Make some money. And then if I need to activate my plan B, then I can come here. Right. So let's say I, I come to you and I say, I want to buy a house like this. So let's say, yeah, like 100, 110K, 120K if I wanted a bit bigger, you know, with a, mm -hmm. with a lot. And I tell you, I want to have tenants. You know, I want you to find tenants for me because right. um, if I'm in Canada, I'm going to have a hard time finding tenants here. And I want to put a clause in the rental agreement with the tenants stating that if the owner or his immediate family want to move here, they have two months to leave or something. Can I put a clause like this in the rental contract and then hand over the management of the property to you? Correct. Yes. Correct. Yes. This is, yes. This is Paraguay. Yeah. Cool. So this is important uh, right. because as I've been traveling all over Latin America, it's hard to find plan B's that you can also make money on in rural areas because as soon as you go into rural areas in most of the continent if you're not here to manage it things are going to happen to your house um, either things are going to get stolen or there's going to be just generally incompetence in terms of property management so here this is not the case no one's going to come and steal your cables and your toilet no. and your tv and your tiles and all of that that's not going to happen um, so this is reassuring. And then if you want to come here, then you have the option to come here whenever you want. In the meantime, you're earning a bit of money. So let's say this house, 110K, mm -hmm. I hand it over to you, find me tenants. How long would it take you to find tenants? And roughly how much rental income could I expect okay. from this house? If you want to get outside, let's go outside. because of the uh, reverberation here, then... <laughs> I think we have a better, we have a better sound It is nicer here. outside. So, um, if I want to rent out this house, we yeah. have a website and we have a whole uh, sales force that is renting out houses. So normally, if I got the power of attorney yesterday, so probably within a week or two, I have the person who wants to move in here and rent it. So it's that easy. So, so it's essentially house on the market. We tenant. have 100%, 100% of our properties of our owners are rented, okay. 100%. And normally when the walls are about this high, people already have the person interested in renting. So as a, as a landlord, when I hear this, yeah. I want to jack up my prices. So what can I expect here per uh, month? So let's, Look at this in a practical viewpoint. We, yesterday we got the power of attorney. So next week we'll put this on our website and we are looking for also not only for people who want to buy, but also people who would like to rent. And if somebody would like to rent this place, uh, there would be more or less, let's be very cautious, 950 per month once the house is finished. 
So considering you have between 100 and 110,000, depending on the price of the tiles you put in, uh, uh, you have uh, between 100 and 110,000 to finish this house. Uh, you have about a cap rate of, let's say, 10 percent, roughly. Cool, yeah, because you need to add a bit of furniture, yeah. put a TV, yeah. etc. Right. Okay, so roughly 10 percent. Roughly 10 percent. What are your fees as the as the management company? Uh, we have a standard. We have uh, three monthly rents have to be paid in advance. Okay. One month rent is commission, commission okay. and sales force. Okay. You know? Two months are being put in escrow with okay. the company, and we will not touch this until the tenant moves out. Okay. Then so we'll look at damages and repair and two pay months that. is escrow, but who pays the, the commission? Is it the the, the, the owner the, or no, the, the tenant? Renter? The, the tenant, tenant the pays tenant the pays, pays the commission the commission. Yes. Okay. So for now I'm still hearing ten percent gross. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm earning. Then I have to pay um, how much because there you also have a, a tax for the colony slash the community. Right. Because you're you're a bit of your own government here, so you Correct. have a tax of how much? In terms of, of monthly fees from your monthly rent, we have a five percent uh, infrastructure fee from your rental income a month that we put into the infrastructure. Okay. And we have more or less ten percent uh, fee for managing. If you manage the property, depending on who manages it, we can do it. There's also settlers that are taking care of properties. Give or take, ten percent of okay. your of your rental income will be the management. So the five percent is essentially a tax, but Mister is more of a libertarian, so he calls it an infrastructure fee. <laughs> 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 and then there's the government uh, t income tax in Paraguay on rental income of approximately ten percent. What about the utilities here? So water, electricity, the also the services for garbage, all of that. Mm -hmm. How much is that per per month, roughly? Okay, so we just said the tenant pays about nine hundred nine hundred fifty for the rent. Yeah. Consider roughly, depending on how many people live here, right around a hundred dollars a month for the utilities, uh -huh. electricity, uh, water, and garbage. The internet is relative. It, it starts at around twenty dollars a month and can go up to seventy dollars a month depending on the bandwidth. Okay. Now remember, we have two fiber optic lines here, so we have very high quality internet if you need it. Cool. So there's competition. But this is right. But this this is also uh, yeah internet traditionally in Paraguay is expensive, very expensive. But the prices are also going down here okay. with the competition, uh, and also remember that that is cost that the tenant bears. Uh, for the uh, owner here, you have the annual cost of maintaining the streets and the security, above all the security, that's the biggest part of that cost. Figure out about 600 a year for that cost. Cool. All right, fantastic. So the tenants pay this, so this doesn't really impact the, no, the yield for no. the, the cap rate for the investor. What about the property tax or HOA fees? The, the property tax for all of Paraiso Verde is paid by the parent company. Okay. And so the the uh, annual fee for the maintaining of the property is a six hundred. So a house like this, about six hundred dollars year. per year for property tax, security, Correct. infrastructure, Correct. the lakes, Everything. all of that. Everything. Okay. That's for the house owner. Okay. For, uh, that's for the house owner. Okay. No. So that's a pretty good deal. I mean, you get a lot for six hundred. A lot of flies and mosquitoes. Is that an issue here? Uh, no. No. Uh, Mosquitoes are only an issue as long as the garden is not maintained. Cool. Now here you have not maintained garden, yeah. so you have a lot of puddles. Okay. Once we even out the garden, this is why I normally don't show this property, yeah. uh, in a couple of weeks there will be one garden here, there will be grass planted, there will be trees planted, and a mosquito has a radius of about 200 meters. So once there are more houses there, there are more properties that are being fixed up. Yeah. And so in those areas where we have the gardens, we have hardly, we have very little mosquitoes. It's not too bad. That's for the flood of Floridians. You know, Floridians are sitting in bird cages. That means yeah. they need to have mosquito nets everywhere. We in Paraguay never have a bird cage. We always sit outside without mosquito nets, which it's tells you everything, which tells you that our normal mosquito uh, uh, nuisance is 
a fraction of what it is in Florida or in other areas, you know, like Norway or whatever. So, so, or Canada, Canada, there's yeah. a lot of mosquitoes. So where you cannot stay outside in the evening because of mosquitoes. Here, we sit outside without mosquito nets. It's and when the maintenance is done, you have a quarter of the mosquitoes that you have right now. Cool. So it's not too bad. I've been in shorts here for a few days. I'm all right. Right, um, right. Cool. So essentially about 10% gross and then you remove about 10% of for property management, 10% for taxes, approximately 5% for the, the infrastructure Correct. fee. So you get generally speaking to a net yield of about 6%, roughly net net yield 6% if you take into account a little bit of maintenance. Right. Um, so this is what you get. I can't but remember it's inflation adjusted. Rents rise if there is inflation. And there's no rent control here. There's no rent control and the good thing is if the tenant doesn't pay the rent, he's out. Okay. There is How no fast? tomorrow. Cool. Okay. So <laughs> you don't have any tenant risk. There's right. a two month deposit. No. A two you months can deposit. change your um, every year you can increase the rent, do whatever. Right. So there's a lot of freedom for landlords. So Correct. this is, I haven't found many places in the world, actually I haven't really found any, where you can get a, a plan B in Latin America in such a, a community that is fully resilient, that is relatively affordable, and where you can actually make some decent cap rates, decent rental yields in the meantime. So if I, was, if I would invest here, I would build such a house Mm -hmm. Nice house. I would also make a spare room somewhere as my deposit. So my personal things would go into the deposit. Oh, I would lock it unit. up. Cool. And I would say, well, I come back in a year. I come back in two years. I come back cool. in nine months and six months. You can rent out the home. So cool. we rent out the home. Since we have no legal restrictions, we can say, well, in two weeks, the guy comes. Remember, we also have a hotel. So if we have to evacuate somebody rapidly, yeah. we always have, we have 88 hotel rooms. So we can Perfect. always put them in the hotel. Meanwhile, the landlord comes in, takes over, opens his deposit, puts and out his, his personal guns. stuff, <laughs> right? And the good thing is since we have security here, like nobody else in the whole country, nothing gets stolen here. So yeah. it's, like, it's like, this is secure. And if you have invested anywhere in the world, you know, if you go away for a few months, be aware that not everything will be there when you come back. Yeah. Here, you can be sure that everything will be in, on its place when you come back. Cool, fantastic. So I'm gonna leave the two of you because I'm meeting with some of your settlers. We're gonna go shoot some guns. Good. I'm looking forward to that. Good. I've been- Have fun. Yeah, I've been excited about <laughs> this all day. So if you're interested in finding out more about the community, there is a link below and the People from the community will get back to you with an information package, et cetera, and you can discuss with them. Right. Fantastic. Great. Okay. Doctor, thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. Sylvia, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>And so from my understanding, it's you can only have the gun at home in the house where it's registered and in transport in your car. Am I correct? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But if you would like to carry the gun all the time, yeah. um, you need a 
uh, extra permission. Okay, you know, so this. concealed carry permit that yes, you can, yes. you can apply mm -hmm. for, but which is more complicated to get. You A need little to bit, not so much. Not so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, so cool. Much. And the price of weapons is, so it's, it's guns are not cheap here. No. So no. definitely more expensive than in Canada and the US. Hmm. Similar prices maybe to Europe, uh, but in Europe you can barely buy them, so that doesn't really count. Um, so typically twice the price of the US for, for guns, um, correct? Yes, yes. Okay. Maybe I think um, for expensive, this, this handgun here, it costs in Europe. Yeah. This handgun here, it costs in Europe 500 and here costs 1000 euro. Okay, right? cool. Okay. And typically on the market, you because here you have what Czech and American guns, right? Yes, it's not so easy to buy American guns here because um, the American would not sell their guns to Paraguay. Okay, but they have some guns in store and then they sell it to you. Okay, cool. Yeah. So typically the guns are mostly from where when you go to the gun shop here? They are come from Czechish, no Czechish guns. So uh, Czech Republic. Yes. And they, buy, they make very great guns from yeah. the Czechish Republic. Yeah, they do. And some Turkish guns. No? And the ammunition comes from, from Israel, for example. Okay. From, yes, mostly from Israel. Okay, so ammo from Israel and Turkish and Czech guns. Okay. Yes. Cool, mm -hmm. interesting. Great, so we're going to go have a little bit of fun with these boys here. Yes. You can go to my website, thewanderinginvestor.com, and sign up to the private list. It's entirely free. This way you will be getting insider information as I travel around the world looking for opportunities. Lastly, feel free to follow me on Instagram at The Wandering Investor. I look forward to hearing from you.